I suggested in my opening that we are better equipped now than we were 29 years ago to argue the case for a powerful, progressive, active, community-rooted education, in part because there are so many more schools doing such good work. Many more today than in 1970. And that ought to be a strength. That ought to be something to build on. Well, my first meeting in 81, it was in Racine, Wisconsin at the beautiful wing spread. Uh, and I won't remember it in grand detail, but enough, I think. What, what surprised me about the group was that here are all these people talking. There, there are um, teacher educators, there were policy makers, there were writers about education. There were very few teachers, very few teachers. Following that, um, every year there was a, for many years, there was a teacher's panel. I mean, the tradition of the teacher's panel started around 82, and teachers who had gone to Prospect were the ones who first, were the first members of that panel. There were some frustrations here. Is the study group a group that sits and talks, or a group that acts? think it's important to bring young, younger people in. I think it's really important to be intergenerational, not to replace, but to actually bring them in because I think there's much benefit. Matter of fact, not only do I think it, I know that there's benefit between the generations. Mm -hmm. So having the um, knowledge and experience with a uh, couple with uh, youth and more current, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. I actually like the idea of uh, identifying college students. I think that that's a wonderful thing, especially those who are in the teaching field right now. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really great thing to do. Um, and that they, they have a lot that they can learn from the North Dakota Study Group. Uh, Miguel talked a little bit about this idea as, you know, walking away with this uh, feeling re-energized, reinvigorated, you know, feeling hope. I think one of the spaces for that is my classroom. You know, if I can walk away, as Kim mentioned, you know, impacting one, two, maybe three people. I've got something to celebrate. Got something to walk away proud of. I came in Monday morning and I, I told them, y'all, you need to present, and it was a personal uh, writing that they were sharing, so I told them, y'all need to present however you feel most comfortable. And um, they were really surprised that I enabled them to share in Spanish if they wanted to. Um, and I was surprised that some of the students who didn't accept me in the beginning of the year started helping me understand what they were saying. Last year on Friday, we had this kind of a closing process at the end of the day. This year on Friday, we had this kind of a process closing at the end of the day. And in both years, on Saturdays, we didn't. And in both years, I think we left a little frayed. Hmm. I'd like to see this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. These meetings serve many purposes. Reaffirmation, encouragement, support, challenge, reconnections, revitalization, relationships, opportunities for hearing new language and different ways of thinking about schools and communities, teaching and learning, the society writ large. Vito. Vito's vision of progressive education history was the, was the engaging interest for Vito. And although the study group was formed around testing, he also saw it a way, as a way of bringing together the progressive practice of the Dewey School. 
it really warms my heart to, to be with you all. And, uh, so that, that's an important piece of that for me. And I don't get to spend enough time with the kind of rich diversity of people we get now at this planning group and now at the, at the conference. And that's uh, a really, really vital development, for, I think, for us all, it certainly is for me. Rondo brought his daughter the other day, and I'm sitting down over here, and she's like, I want some out of the kitchen. And I was like, okay, go get it. And she grabbed my hand and she was like, no, you got to come get it with me. <laughs> and she was just so innocent and the look in her eyes, like, I mean, she didn't fear anything about me. And it's kids her age that's taught the fear of a person in a body like mine. And so, you know, I've become more and more grateful over the years and aware of the stories that are passed through conversation and um, you know the bonding that happens just when you, uh, you know, when you let your words kind of dance around in the air. I look forward to being with North, with my comrades from North Dakota Study Group probably more than I look forward to doing anything else in my life. I, I walk away from here feeling so rejuvenated and um, and having been with people who who think um, about the world and education in a way that, that I do, and I so appreciate that. Work in progress uh, has served over the years to result in a lot of new publication, new interests, new directions. That's a feature of our meeting that I think is really important, uh, and I think it was especially successful this time around. In some ways, this is the study group at its best. We want to build on the rich legacy that Vito Perón left us. We want to build on 2015 when we met in South Texas and examined culturally affirming teaching and learning. We want to examine borders in 2016 under the thematic of Movimiento Sin Fronteras. It's a very appropriate thematic that really helps us to understand the work that Vito helped us imagine and really helped us to sort of trouble ourselves with. We want to address issues of borders and how symbolic and real borders get in the way of how children and families grow up in healthy communities. And so we hope that you will join us in South Texas in February of 2016 for yet another meeting of the North Dakota Study Group.